Hi, some of you may remember there was an international conference for men's issues that took place back in August of last year in Chicago. Some of you might recall there were journalists present at the event. Well, about now is when we can expect those journalists to finally publish their articles. Quite why it takes you all five months to cobble this shit together is beyond me. I went, I went to the Being a Man conference and I produced three hours of coverage in a couple of weeks. What's that quality, you say? Well, maybe that is a factor. Another perhaps more important factor might be making the effort to get the details right. We're going to go through one of these articles today, and we're not going to insult anyone. We're not going to bully or harass anyone, even in the context of a screen that you cannot turn off and a set of eyes you cannot close. We're just going to spend a minute or two correcting the mistakes and the falsehoods. I'm sure it won't take too long. Take it away. Bloomberg. The woman organising the Men's Rights Conference. Okay, false. If there is to be one woman who can claim such a title, it is Alison Tiemann, for it was she who organised the conference, and Brian Martinez and many other volunteers. Karen hosted it to some degree. She emceed most of the main room talks and was highly instrumental to the proceedings but she didn't organize it but she was at least able to be there <laughs> unlike Allison, who for some very confusing set of reasons nobody understands was turned away at the u.s border and banned for five years thanks trump right that was that was a perfect opportunity for you to criticize the trump administration for its clearly xenophobic practices yeah you could have got so many more clicks with that angle hmm? bigger fish to fry you say okay what if I told you Alison is Mexican? Calm down, she's not. She's Canadian, but isn't it funny how there's such a canyon of difference there? Equality. I get the question all the time. Why are you a men's rights advocate as a woman, right? That's just weird. Why wouldn't I? If I see something wrong and I can help put it right, why wouldn't I do that? Do you ask male feminists, you know, why do you care about women? Why are you asking a woman, why do you care about men? So I'm here to ask these women why they care about men's rights. That wasn't a falsehood, but can you see why it was a mistake? Karen already answered that question, and not just in the intro of your own bloody video. She gets that question all the time, as she explained in the intro of your own bloody video. In case you missed it, in summary, it was, because I care about men, why wouldn't I care about men? And then 18 seconds later, you went ahead and asked that very question as though she never fucking said anything in the intro of your own bloody video. She finds the question, why do you care about men, <laughs> to be a baffling question. Because the answer is so obvious that it's almost sinister to even ask it. So she answered it with a rhetorical question. Why wouldn't I care about men? But you didn't hear it as rhetorical, did you? To you, why wouldn't I care about men, is a baffling question. <laughs> Because the answer is so obvious that it's almost sinister to even ask it. Am I warm? The men's rights movement began and grew in the 60s and 70s. False. I mean, people advocating for men's human rights have been around for a lot longer than that. It all depends on what you call them. What kind of loaded identity you slap onto them, which is a large part of the problem in the first place. But pray tell, what does any of this have to do with gentlemen's clubs? But the movement exploded once gatherings could happen online. That is true, well done, but that's that's poor people. The working classes and the powerless and the downtrodden could finally get their hands on the internet was the thing. It wasn't an outpouring of like rich cigar-chomping knickerbockers funneling from gentlemen's clubs straight into internet chat rooms as your rather misleading pictorial narrative would insinuate. Speaking of which, what are we reading here? What are we representing as typical men's rights talking points on the internet? There are no more beautiful girls left in normal jobs. What if a girl is eight or above? She will... I can't read the rest. Okay. What else? Do not compensate your lack of game with good... Okay, so pick-up artists. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there was one pick-up artist in the entire conference. He did one talk and then he left early, so he didn't even appear in the panel for which he was scheduled. This is, see, this is the kind of shit you wanted to hear at the ICMI, but you couldn't find anyone saying anything like it, so, man, just show an image of it. An image 
utterly unrelated to men's rights or any conference about men's rights. Maybe people will just assume the rest of the lie by themselves. And you can't be on the hook just for telling the first half of a lie, can you? Clever. Very clever. Honey Badger Radio has nine consistent hosts. <laughs> Only Brian and Hannah could be considered consistent, but that's by the by. They're entirely funded by user donations. True. Links in the low bar. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Karen is one of the founding members of the Honey Badger Radio. <laughs> it's the Karen to you. False. It was in 2014. Minor mistake, but very easy to correct. I think I sort of saw it coming. But some of the panelists didn't have as measured of a view on men's rights. We had a recent situation. We got so damn tired of people making false allegations against our members, we finally took one to court. How is that not measured? You do quite a lot of measuring when you take someone to court. And how is it less measured than Karen's views on men's rights, given that Karen has also taken these liars to court over events that actually did happen in 2015? Did that never come up <laughs> in the hours you spent with her? Or is there some reason it's not okay when Harry does it? Do you realize how many points that would prove? <laughs> <laughs> the Southern Poverty Law Center defines dozens of men's rights groups in the US as hate groups. True. And then not quite true, kind of not really, and then true again. So we haven't uttered a falsehood this time, just a massive, massive mistake. You, you say this as though anyone has any reason to take the SPLC seriously. They are a hate group. It can be asserted without evidence, can be dismissed without evidence. So I spoke with Paul Elam, who's considered the unofficial founder of the men's rights movement. False. What? <laughs> I mean, if one person considers that to be the case, then yeah, technically true. Do you consider that to be the case? All right, well done. But in future, whenever you're speaking in the first person, could you kindly write in it as well? We know that the pay gap exists. We know that women are overwhelmingly more likely to be assaulted in their lifetime than men and boys. I guess not. Okay, so, false on both counts. Well, <laughs> again, it may be true that you know it, if a falsehood can be said to be held as knowledge, but it is false that it is true. Asserted without evidence, dismissed without evidence. Another 20 lashes with Hitchens' razor. Scoundrel. And who is we, by the way? Do, do you mean we as in you and the audience, in which case, definitely false? If you mean you and the institution you work for, probably true. And this is why we say journalists with comically overplayed scare quotes, journalists aren't supposed to make demonstrable falsehoods as though they're uncontroversially true. You are not journalists, you are storytellers. Yeah, you write fiction. And you want your fiction to be treated like a religion and I find that kind of thing perturbing. So I just went to the panel on sexual assault allegations and specifically false accusations of assault and rape and I noticed that this panel had the highest number of attendees asking questions to the panelists afterwards. Actually, Dankula's talk was also mostly comprised of, of Q&A, as was Sargon's, because they also did fairly short talks, leaving the rest of the time slot available for an inevitably longer Q&A. My talk had 60 minutes of presentation and exactly zero minutes of Q&A. So whatever you're insinuating about this panel, would you therefore be insinuating the opposite in regard to my talk? I can't tell. I don't know what you're insinuating. I find this really interesting because we know that statistically false accusations are extremely rare, being anywhere from 2 to 10 percent. Okay, now I see what you're insinuating, and it is false to say you know, or we know, whatever the fuck that means, how many rape accusations are false. There's a minority of cases confirmed to be false, and that's what we're looking at in your infographic there. There is also a, mi a minority of cases confirmed to be true, or at least ones that result in a conviction, of which some are still false. But between these two minorities, there is a big ugly bar of statistics in the middle that are neither confirmed nor denied to be true or false. Statistically, what this proves is the majority of rape accusations are in a category called we don't know if this is true or false. So it is absolutely and inarguably false to say we know. 
It doesn't even matter who we is this time. I don't know, you don't know, nobody knows, unless they've been lying for so long that they believe it with certainty. But again, can it be called knowledge if it's false? Don't care, don't know, it's fucking false. I was wrongly convicted of a crime and sentenced to prison. So that, uh, I lost everything in my life. I'm curious about why there seems to be such a focus on false accusations here at this conference. Did, did you not just hear the guy? Who, the, just now, the, they happen. We talk about false allegations because they happen. You keep doing this. You give us the answer to the question and then you ask the question. Are you a fucking time lord stuck in a reverse universe? Or is this just your ever so subtle way of saying, we know this is true and these people are saying it might not be true. So uh, I'm not saying they're lying. I'm not, totally not saying they're wrong. That's you, audience. That's all you. You did the math. I didn't make you do the math. Again, you think you can get away with only telling the first half of the lie, but sometimes all you do is bite off the bit with the lie in it. And how there's such a high number of men here who feel that they have been falsely accused when we know statistically that that's very unlikely. There you have it, gentlemen. You don't know what actually happened to you. We do. <laughs> this false accusation of yours is just a feeling you see, and it's a feeling we'd rather you didn't express shock horror. And what the fuck do you mean unlikely? That, that doesn't, even if you're right and you're not, but even if you were, unlikely things happen all the time. Seven billion people. That means if there's a one in a million chance of something happening, there are 7,000 people to whom it has happened. And no matter how uncommon it is, somewhere in the world, there will be a website for it and a magazine for it and a conference about it. It's like you've come to a medical conference about rare blood diseases and you're saying, why are there so many men here who feel like they have leukemia when we know that that's very unlikely? You're in a conference that is self-selected to be concerned with the unlikely thing. Yeah? You make you sound like a fucking psycho or, or an embarrassing moron at best. You pretended to understand, understand statistics now, but you, all you did was prove that you do not understand statistics. But it is not your job to explain facts. It's your job to uphold a narrative, to tell a story. And that's fine right up until you try to pass this story off as the truth. And people are getting sick of this story. They want the truth. So we hold conferences where we tell the truth. And your reaction is somewhat predictable. I see you're using our footage. I assume it's okay if I use yours. Thanks. I mean, I guess the one person that I'm I'm not sure that I like, I, I kind of like her and I got along with her, is the, the journalist from Bloomberg, right? J'accuse! And I did spend a lot of time with her and I still haven't got a solid feeling as to how she's going to portray me or the event. What the fuck was that? Was that supposed to be our spicy bit of, ha ha, we caught you talking smack about us. Gotcha. She said she didn't know. She wasn't sure. She's not 100% certain that Bloomberg is a pure and benevolent force for good. And that, to you, is some kind of dramatic climax to the story. I mean, it proves she's talking shit, right? Because we know that Bloomberg is a pure and benevolent force for good. Well, you just made yourselves the story. Oh, woke and selfless ones. You just slid into our DMs, parked your ass on our, on our conference and went, these people think we're crap journalists. What the fuck, right? You no, you're not even journalists. You tell lies and you big yourself up. You're just an extension of the fucking mob. Except you're not the mob that supplies the illegal alcohol. You're the mob that makes alcohol illegal in the first place. False. The honey badges are not hosting the 2020 conference in Australia and we never had any plans or intentions to do so. I have no idea how you got that idea into your head, but hey, when Australians start kicking up a stink about we don't want your Minge Issues conference, I heard it's been hosted by a bunch of lying cunts who contradict things that we know. Well, job done, right? <laughs> but this time the entire lie is on you, Bloomberg, not just the first half of it. You told an entire falsehood all by yourself. Imagine a world where there are consequences for that sort of thing, where people are allowed to call you out when you lie. You can't imagine it, can you? It scares you. 
All right, that is the end. There will probably be more of these, if not this year, then next year, and the year after, and so on. Stay tuned for something else, maybe. I should do more work than I do. Sorry that I don't. All right, bye-bye. Don't bother liking or subscribing. It doesn't work on my channel. Just go to Subscribestar or, or Patreon. They can't, they can't randomly unsubscribe you from that yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Goodbye, possibly for the last time. <laughs> I should make that my new catchphrase. Goodbye forever. Lol. <laughs>